At the beginning of Trolls 2, the world tour, um, Poppy is queen now, which is very exciting. So she's in a kind of leadership role and she's like kind of discovering who she is as a leader. And um, she finds out that there are all these other kinds of trolls in the world and they have all these different styles of music that they have their kind of worldview based on. And um, she finds out that uh, there's another queen who wants to take over all the trolls and have the only music in the troll universe be rock music. And Poppy and Branch have to kind of go on this really fun adventure and meet all these different kinds of trolls to, you know, to save all the music, obviously. She's on kind of a personal journey to make sure that, you know, she's a good leader and that she listens. And there's a kind of larger message in the movie about listening to different voices and celebrating each other's differences. And it's just such a fun way to explore that idea because in it we get to have Kelly Clarkson singing country and just all these different styles of music and all these different styles of trolls. You know, uh, I think I, I, the first time I saw the finished movie, I was like, oh man, if I were a little kid, I would be like, oh no, the techno trolls are my favorite. Oh, the country trolls are my favorite. Um, Cause they've just done such an amazing job designing all these different characters. Queen Barb, who's played by Rachel Bloom, who is so funny in this movie, she uh, represents rock music, and the rock trolls want to take over the world and, you know, make everybody hard rockers, and I think it was really, like, again, that choice was just the funniest choice and, like, helped the story the most, because um, obviously it's kind of, like, a perfect genre of music to be these like tiny villainous um, trolls. And there's a lot of really good rock music sequences in the movie, um, but it's pretty great to have, you know, Rachel and Ozzy Osbourne um, like really leaning into the comic elements of being like the baddies in this movie. We get a little, uh, a little bit of vulnerable branch in this one because he, wants to, you know, say that he feels more than friends with Poppy and, you know, he just doesn't have the courage to really say it. Um, so it's really sweet to see them evolving and, you know, trying to talk about their feelings. She's very loyal and she's tough, you know, that like this leader, this, you know, kind of pretty pink princess is really optimistic about people, really loves everything, but also is just smart and tough. And like being able to have those little moments of like growl in her vocalization is really fun. I felt really confident and, and, and happy to be um, working with him again and like really looked forward to those sessions because I get to kind of dabble in music. You know, I've been lucky enough to be in films where I get to kind of stand just on the outside of the music world. And, you know, having somebody like Justin involved, it just makes me feel so grateful that I get to like fulfill that little part of me and know that I'm in such good hands, you know? It's like having like the best parachute on your back. Well, I will say that for adults, I'm just very grateful that they think that the movie and the music is, like, good enough, they like it enough that they can watch it with their kids over and over and over and not get mad at me and Justin. So very grateful to you, um, Justin, for making the music good. Because um, that was something that he said when we were working on the first one. He was like, you know, I just want to make sure that parents are happy to listen to this music. Audiences can expect, um, you know, the same kind of signature positivity um, and colorful kind of visual feast of the first movie. And then, you know, just a lot more music, a lot more characters. Um, it really is this sweet kind of discovery of all these different genres that of course we all know about, but um, to like really get to see them on display um, through the lens of the Trolls world is really fun. He is the reigning Prince of Funk. 
and he's got a good vibe to him. Cooper, I think, was looking at the scrolls and sees that there's uh, trolls that kind of look like him with the four legs. So he goes on this journey trying to find uh, someone that looks like him and, you know, maybe find his people and gets sucked up by the, the funk, uh, the funk ship, if you will, the mothership. And when he gets up there, that's when he meets Prince D, who meets me and sees that, oh, he does have a twin brother, looks just like him. They kind of catch up and my character, Prince D, kind of lets him know the whole story of what happened with their strings and how the pop trolls and, and the uh, funk trolls kind of had a little beef. Justin Timberlake was super smooth in the studio. He just like, man, let's have fun. And I always wanted to work with him. It's like been a dream of mine. So it was dope to be able to work on something like this where they kind of been through the experience before. And so I know they were kind of uh, knew what to expect with the next one, but they were still open to trying new things and, and, and letting me try new things as well. With Don't Slack, it was kind of like the end of the session, I felt like, and I just like hopped on the drums, and, and Ludwig, who was making all the music with, with Justin as well, he hopped on the guitar, and it just, it, you know, the songs like that, you, they either can take like years to make or just like minutes, and that was one that just happened in minutes. Cream Barb, she's obsessed. She's just like, she's got to have all the trolls, you know, doing heavy metal headbanger, you know, type action and, and, and mosh pits. She just, she just wants everyone to respect rock and roll, you know, and, and I'm in that like hard rock. It's crazy too, because now in days too, I feel like rock is, it's kind of a void right now for rock, real rock bands now. And so um, I kind of feel her on that, you know, it, it would have been nice, but, uh, yeah, she's she's not taking no for answer, and she's she's taking over, you know, each village and just being like, nope, this is rock, and and, and what we say goes. And she got Ozzy, you know, the, the OG in there doesn't really know what's going on, but he's down for it too. And I thought it was dope, man. She's got she's got the tenacity, you know. She's uh, you you kind of need that. There are so many humans that look like troll characters, and I think that when they see this cartoon, they can see, you know, themselves, you know, they can finally see someone that they can relate to. There's always a little troll inside of us. Um, some, you know, go on and comment and make, you know, little posts and stuff, but I think this is more so about that positive troll that lives inside of you, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I think people love the fact that all these genres are coming together, so then they, you know, people come up with hard rock and then they get exposed to, to hip hop and then that kind of changes their whole life or people, not a lot, enough people know about classical music, you know what I'm saying? So it's giving a lot of shine to like these genres and stuff. This is actually the perfect movie to get the most out of a theater experience. So much good music, so many good sounds and colors. Like it was so much stuff to look at. It was amazing, like just such a treat for the eyes and the ears. And you know, unless you got a crazy sound system at the crib, you might want to go and check it out at the theaters to get the full impact. King Trollix loves bringing people together. You know, I think his big thing is it's, it's not just about throwing a party or a gathering. It's really about bringing people together and, and, uh, and celebrating music and celebrating how music brings people together. Um, uh, and, uh, and I think that's what makes him so awesome. And he's just on 10 all the time. And I think uh, in a lot of ways, I live my life on 10 all the time. I mean, it's pretty awesome to be on the same bill as, uh, you know, Justin Timberlake, Anna Kendrick, Anderson Pack, um, Kelly Clarkson, Ozzy Osbourne, and all the George Clinton, all these amazing uh, people, you know, and uh, I, it's 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 just super cool to 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 be even in the same breath as those people. So uh, I'm just really excited, and I'm also just really excited to animate a character. I've always wanted to do it since I started acting and. Uh, and this is like one of those things where you like, all your friends will be like, yo, you made it. You like have your voice on an animated character. And I'm like, let's go. I love acting for animation because you get to really be the, the biggest version of yourself. You get to explore, you know, this, you get to ex explore in ways that uh, that you sometimes can't, on camera, um, 
and it's it's just awesome you get to just make this like this you're making this thing from scratch really and and then this character is like sketched based on your movements and your voice and and uh and it's really it's really cool to 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 like give your voice to let, give your voice to something and then like you have no idea what it looks like until maybe a year later and then you're like whoa that's what came of what i did you know so it's it's uh it's pretty cool animating a character in that way where you're just, you know, it's really a, it's truly a blank slate. It's all you have are words on the paper and you kind of bring these words to life. And then the words bring the character to life, you know, which is, uh, which I think is pretty special. Me, I know I'm playing Satine. And I'm Chanel. And, and they're uh, connected through their hair which is kind of what we are and they're best friends yeah and we are as well it's very so. close to who we are in reality <laughs> and they're very quirky and funny and they talk like in each other's sentences all the time so it's very easy for us to play them absolutely to prepare for this role we had to eat a lot of sugar mm -hmm. and uh, we had of course to be together <laughs> Absolutely. And then <laughs> amp it up like 100%. Kind of. Absolutely. I'm <laughs> so with you. I remember the first time we were sitting there and like trying to find what, what kind of voice uh, Satin and Chenille were supposed to have. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we definitely tried out a couple of ones, but this was the most natural one. Yeah. My name is Shirley and Yi, and I'm playing Penny Whistle. Um, she is nervous, not like me. Uh, she's tiny, again, not like me. Uh, and she is from the classical world. It explores, uh, explores all genres of music, and, and so you get kind of a little bit of everything that kind of makes up the world. So it's, I think it kind of gives everyone a voice. So I think that's cool. I'm also really excited to work with all these amazing animators, like all the textures and all the colors. It's kind of, it's it's so vivid. Um, but yes, also the celebrities. I'm excited about the celebrities. <laughs> Queen Barb's mission is very simple. She loves rock. <laughs> That's it. I mean, the, there's, she just wants to share the gift of rock with every single person troll that exists in this universe. It's the superior, for her it's the superior sound, uh, and she, but she just doesn't know that the other sounds are that great. She was born a rocker, she lives a rocker, and the feeling is so good that she just wants to make the world a better place by making rock accessible to everyone. Uh, and I think that's what, that's Barb's main goal here. The cast is beyond giant, and it had to be. And everyone was in support of having such a giant cast because we have so many different genres of music that we needed to have authentic musicians and legends be a part of this cast. Uh, to have Kelly Clarkson represent country is just a dream come true. To have, of course, Justin Timberlake to be, uh, you know, representing pop and bringing his incredible experience to writing and collaborating with these musicians uh, and talent uh, just help bring a cohesiveness to the musical identity. To have George Clinton and Mary J. Blige be representing funk is beyond. Ozzy Osbourne <laughs> for rock is just beyond. Like there are just so many legends. Justin Timberlake is like a powerhouse of skill and talent and passion and care. Uh, boy is he thoughtful about everything. He's a perfectionist and cares about the character, cares about the music, and cares about the identity of this movie. It's impressive to watch how hard he works and how, how much he cares. She's amazing. Uh, I've been such a fan of hers for, uh, for quite some time, her web stuff and her crazy ex-girlfriend character. And to have her come in and play a high school rocker <laughs> is pretty amazing. She also, everyone has been so thoughtful and intelligent about the approach of their characters. Uh, but her, oh boy, the power she brings 
to play Barb is so funny and so authentic and she totally loved talking about how she had her rocker experience growing up and was bringing this attitude. So it was incredible. I am playing Leslie. She is awesome. She has so many capabilities and she uses all her assets. One of her assets is she gets short and she gets tall, but that's just like motivation. She knows that she can get big for her friends. You know, she gets tall for her friends. So, and she's just the friend of all friends and I get to be friends again with my Bella and a Kendrick, so I'm excited. I love my character's confidence and I love that she's like for everybody and she's a big support system and I'm, I think she's excited that she's a troll and I'm excited for her that she's a troll. King Quincy, he's um, informing and letting everybody know that it, everything is better when everything is on the one, when everybody's all together, when there's one nation on the groove Everything works out better, and he's trying to bestow that on everybody. I think this this film up the ante with the emphasis put on music. I mean, all different kinds of music, all different genres of music, and that brings it together as a world, you know, world peace through music. I think this one actually achieved that, you know, all people have a, a groove that they can participate in. And to bring it together on one film is excellent. Being in there with all the different younger musicians helped me reinvent myself, helped me keep being able to dance and participate. And um, best of all, being able to play a cartoon character <laughs> is all something I've always wanted to do. But with this crew, it's really um, a dream come true. Mary J, we've worked together before. I love working with her. But Anderson Pack, I wanted to meet him anyway. He's, he's a, got a lot of talent. And I, I know I can rub off some of that. I really like him. And Justin, you know, he's bad. I ain't got to say nothing about him. He's bad on his own. You don't need nobody to say nothing. He's bad. Well, I think that's a good theme, you know, people working together, music bring people together. And it, doing it, this particular film, it shows that togetherness makes everybody stronger. You know, when, when it all comes together as one, I don't care how many different genres of music, but when they come together to sing together in anything, it makes it, us all stronger. Trolls World Tour is about finding harmony in diversity and Poppy goes on a quest to bring the world together and she is a little naive and she doesn't realize how nuanced the world is. Queen Barb is super punk rock. Um, she shreds on the guitar, she hates pop music, she feels like it's an earworm and it goes into your brain and you can't get it out and the catchy hooks really bother her and Poppy on the other hand loves to sing pop music she sings and dances every single morning and she actually brings her community together through singing dancing and hugging Trolls movies are about inspiring one to be their best self and Trolls movies are also super joyous. Um, and Trolls movies actually tap into the person who wants to sing and dance inside you every day. The thing I like about the film mostly is, is it's a message that celebrates being different. And when you're young, when you're at school, it can be really hard to be different. The tiniest, difference, the tiniest difference in your life can be something which is, becomes massive. The wrong haircut, the wrong bag, the wrong pair of shoes. School can be pretty brutal sometimes. But this is a film which I hope tells you that, that actually if you're different, if you look different, 
if you think different, you're probably one of the luckiest people in that school because it means you've got an imagination and it means you've got a, a, a want for something else, for something new, to create something. And so uh, the film celebrates all differences. And as long as you use those differences to be positive and to make a difference either in your school or outside your school and every day really, you'll be celebrated for it one day. I guarantee you that. I think what I love about the film is that they've managed to take all of the things which people love about the first Trolls, which are these characters and the world that they live in, and it's just opened it out to this huge sort of expanse of these new characters and new dilemmas and it's uh, and new adventures, really, but it feels so much bigger than the, the first film, but with all the heart and emotion uh, still intact um, I can't wait for you to see it and I can't wait for my own little people who are at home to see it I love how dramatic he is I love that he's just a sort of king of drama really uh, and of course you know if you love Biggie you've got to love Mr Dinkles so together they're I think they're only happy if there's drama happening that's why I like him. There's a difference of opinion in that um, there's a certain troll by the name of Queen Barb who represents the hard rock trolls. And um, <clears throat> she sort of thinks the way that, the way to save music is to um, sort of unite everyone by making them all the same style. Uh, or the same genre of music, and so Poppy and Branch uh, sort of, um, like I said, go on this crazy adventure to to try to help teach Barb that uh, all styles of music should be saved. Branch and Poppy's relationship has changed a little bit. Uh, it took the whole first movie to sort of bring Branch out of his shell and help him to discover his his true colors, and and now I think he's he's exploring some feelings with uh, Poppy that he's never really felt before, and trying to find a way to tell her. As a sort of the the producer of all this music, uh, coming up with all these different styles and bringing them together was a big challenge, but uh, a lot of fun for myself and uh, the whole team. It's really, we really touched on so many different styles of music. And it's, when you see the movie back, it's, it's something that I think we're all really proud of is that we're um, teaching young minds about all these different styles and how that can relate to life and representing um, a, a celebration of individuality and how, how being different is, it's pretty cool. Coming in again as executive music producer, it um, when I found out the worlds that we were exploring and how how far our reach was going to go and how diverse the music was going to become, I just got incredibly excited um, and felt like honestly the way that I grew up hearing so many different and experiencing so many different styles of music. Um, I, I, I felt like a kid again. There are no bad ideas. That's always my, one of my rules in the studio is that there are no bad ideas. And um, I think he's the same way. He has a, he's pretty tenacious uh, and, and we'll both stay till the job is done, so to speak. But we had a lot of fun. Um, his musical ability speaks for itself and his knowledge of music and his approach um, is, um, sort of one in a million. So I had a lot of fun working with Ludwig. I think the reason people connect with Trolls is that there's a beautiful, humorous, um, loving way to bring you um, 
a, 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 a message of diversity and how that should be celebrated. And at the same time, I mean, all this fantastic music, if I can say that, can I say that? Um, and and uh, it's just it's just a great ride every time. This movie is 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 really funny and really musical and and really has a wonderful wonderful message for young people and for older people like myself. I play Guy Diamond. If you've seen uh, the first Trolls, you know he's the glittery one uh, who farts glitter. Uh, I did that in my audition. That's why I got the part. That's a joke. Uh, and we're here doing Trolls 2, and I, I love playing this character because he's really sweet. There's this inherent sweetness about him, and now he has a tiny baby that he can give all of his life advice to, and uh, although I think in this movie he learns a lot more from his uh, child than his child learns from him. To be honest, I feel very blessed, very humbled, very gracious to be part of such an amazing cast to get to work with uh, Justin and Anna and uh, James Corden and all these people that I have uh, I've luckily become friends with and to be in a movie with them now is a dream come true for this for this little kid. So, we've had a real blast doing it. Trolls World Tour is is a bigger, more exciting, more passionate, louder, more colorful world than Trolls 1 because we took this beautiful world that we created in Trolls 1 and then took it and went all of these different places because you realize there's more trolls in Trolls World Tour and so you see their whole lives, uh, their different cultures and their different styles of music. So it's it's literally a universe that is so colorful, so amazing, so passionate. I think you guys are going to love it. I play Tiny Diamond, as you can see. Um, I just, I love that, you know, they're even including me in this series. And, you know, we're like a big fan of the original movie, huge fan of Anna's and a you know, huge fan of Justin. So it's just nice to be welcomed into the fold. Um, but my character is awesome. He raps and he has a super low voice, even though he's super tiny. So it helps me out. You know what I'm saying? I can come in early in the morning and still make it rain. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I think the the music for sure is like on another level from what I've like I've only heard bits and pieces but it just seems like it's so grand and it's including like so many different forms of music you know what I mean and you know I think that's really cool this movie is like exploring like all the different like genres not all of them but like you know everybody's favorite five or something like that but um yeah I mean they include in the hip hop so you know I'm golden it's an extreme honor and a blessing to be, you know, in a movie with people's talent that I truly admire. You know, it's a long list of awesome people. Justin, you know, Anna, um, Kelly Clarkson, Anderson Pack, uh, super awesome. George Clinton, Ozzy Osbourne, that's crazy. It's the first time I've ever been in working with Justin, and I gotta say it's, it's been very inspiring to work with an artist that are so devoted to his craft. You know, he comes in and he, we're literally like spending like 10 hours, 12 hours in the studio to just finesse a little detail or a little, you know, it could be, it, it, I, it's just inspiring to work with artists that are really into details and really into the craft and really go over and over and over it until it gets um, to perfection. It's just so fun to work with so many artists that are in different genres. You know, every little troll tribe is represented with different artists. So for for the funk trolls, the, for example, we had uh, a couple of days in the studio with Anderson Park and George Clinton, and we did a song for the movie called "Don't Slack," and that basically came out of a jam session uh, from like midnight to four in the morning, where Anderson was just playing the drums and I was just playing bass and. Uh, and it was, you know, we were just jamming, and and we, a great song came out of it. And, and Justin just like, he's like, this is, I, he's like, is this this is this is a jam. He's like, this is a smash. It is like a dream. I mean, it's also like the the main character in the movie, she's a rock troll, Queen Barb, and she's playing guitar 
and I'm playing all of her solos. You know, I'm, I'm watching the screen, I'm, and I'm seeing her shredding. I'm like, oh my god, okay, I can finally use all this, uh, all these hours I spend in the basement on practicing my guitar, and it's awesome, and it's in the movie. Doing the voiceovers for uh, the Trolls world, world Tour with Queen Essence has been fun for me because it's it's acting. It's something that I love to do, and, and you get a chance to speak for these cartoon characters, and I'm a huge animation film fan. I love all types of cartoons, and just to be a part, to be able to speak for Queen Essence and to be a part of a huge, huge, huge um, franchise like Trolls is just amazing. I'm so grateful. It means a lot to me. I'm, I'm so excited to be a part of this cast. I mean, Justin Timberlake, Kelly Clarkson, George Clinton, Anderson Pack, who's one of my favorite artists, just to be a part of something like this for children, you know, for them to see us, it's, it's amazing. Uh, Trolls World Tour is about uh, my character, Queen Barb of the Hard Rock Trolls, wanting to unite all of the trolls under hard rock and uh, getting rid of the rest of the music. I got to create a character kind of from the, almost the music genre of rock um, outward. Uh, that was the first thing that informed the character of Barb. And it's really fun because you can do, you really have freedom to play and there isn't a time limit. And so you can kind of just explore and all that matters is what's coming out of your mouth into the microphone. She's a teenager. I mean, she has the mentality of kind of a 15 year old who is deeply insecure and very overcompensatory and wants to be the queen of everything and wants to make her dad proud. And she still kind of hasn't grown up because that's a pretty immature thing to think, oh, if everyone just thinks the way I do, then everything will be fine. She doesn't understand why she's so chipper all the time. It's kind of unnerving. Someone that happy and chipper, it's like, what's your, what's your deal? It, it, it scares her. Well, I think this story is special because it explores kind of the complex idea of if we're all alike, there won't be fighting, but then the world would be a boring place. And so especially in this day and age, a movie that celebrates differences and celebrates disagreeing and different points of view is really unique. What we find out in the beginning of the film is that the troll village that we thought was the whole troll universe is just a small part of it, that there's all these other type of troll worlds of different genres of music and maybe, just maybe, there's a place where Cooper belongs. And Cooper finds out that he, he is from a different place. He's from a place called Vibe City, where the funk trolls live. Um, and he has he is the, the son of the king and queen, and he has a brother, which is amazing to find out. And I loved it, because I love funk music. I love George Clinton. I love Mary J. Blige. So to be their child was a dream come true for me. Anderson Pack plays my brother, who's an amazing musician and just so super cool. He's he's probably, he's the cool brother. I have to admit it. Uh, Vibe City is the most amazing place in, in of all. It's basically a giant's mothership that you get beamed up into, where everyone is just having fun and living their funkiest lives. Uh, to be honest, this is, I would I wish I lived there. What we find out is that not only are these main genres of music, but these combinations, these offshoots of things that happen when we combine things, which I think is a beautiful message about mixing and, and just diversity. It's, it's a beautiful message in this movie that I appreciate, that all music and that all people are valuable. Working with Justin on the soundtrack is like going to a fantasy camp, you know? Uh, uh, meeting someone who's at the very top of the musical game and working with them and seeing their passion involved in it. And I'm just trying to not fall over myself. I'm not a singer. I don't know what I'm doing at all. But he, he really took his time to make you feel at ease and uh, to make you feel like you could do it, um, even though I barely could. Uh, so <laughs> 
People love the Trolls movie, first of all, because they're beautiful. I don't think there's anything that looks quite like it. It looks like um, hand-stitched, kind of like you're watching puppets in, a, in an animated movie, which I think is a very, very unique um, thing that they're doing and something that really stands out amongst a lot of children's movies or a lot of animated films. Um, I think people like the story. People like the, the positivity. That's what I really like about it is the positivity, the optimism, the fact that, hey, there's going to be bad days. There's going to be bad situations. There's going to be obstacles in your life. And it's up to you to choose how you handle them. If you want to be angry and upset and worried all the time like Branch, or if you want to be positive and know you can do it and, and be confident in yourself like Poppy. And I think we got to be Poppies. <laughs>